In this video, I show you how to create a really handy and easy to use matte effect or fade effect using Affinity Photo. And if you check the YouTube description, you will find a macro that you can download, install and use completely free of charge. If you find this video useful and you'd like to see more, then please like and subscribe. Normally, if you want to create a fade or matte effect, you would use curves. Let's take a look. I'll choose adjustments and curves. Let's just move this so we can see. Then you would normally bring up the black and have an instant fade effect. Like so. And you would also probably bring down the whites to fade them a little. Also, you would probably need to add some contrast which you would achieve by adding some sort of S-curve in the center, like so. Bring down the blacks and tweak up the whites. And there we go, we now have a fade effect. Let's just hide this and take a look before and after. And we have a nice fade effect created with curves. Curves are great for the fade effect, they give you a lot of control. But sometimes I like to have a fade effect which I can change with just a couple of sliders. Sort of simplified but with just as much, if more control over its attributes. And to do this I use just a couple of adjustments which I'll show you now. Let's just delete these curves. Right click and let's find delete. Then we'll add our first adjustment to create the fade which will be a levels adjustment. So adjustments and levels. We'll create the actual fade by using the output black and output white sliders. These two sliders set the range of the output, so it allows you to shrink the output. And so change the black and white limit of the image coming out of the adjustment. If we first up the black level, like so, then as you can see, right away, we have a nice fade. Our blacks are now faded. And if we bring down the white level, like so, then our whites are faded. That's the fade part of the effect complete. As with the curves, the second part to creating the fade effect is to add contrast. We need to add contrast so that it's not just a washed out image. As the fade effect itself inherently reduces contrast. Okay, so we need to add contrast, but we need to add this contrast before the levels adjustment, or underneath the levels adjustment. Otherwise, the contrast will negate the fade effect created with the levels adjustment. So select the layer underneath the levels adjustment, then back down to adjustments and select brightness and contrast. Now simply by using the contrast slider, we can set the level of contrast in the effect. Because we've placed the contrast adjustment under the levels, our fade stays as we adjust the contrast. That looks good. There we go, we now have the fade and the contrast, and the great thing is we can control the fade and the contrast separately using the layer opacities. With the levels selected, use the opacity to change the fade effect amount. Or we can easily change the contrast, select the brightness and contrast, and change the opacity, like so. Absolutely brilliant. Also, another handy feature, Side effect of using these two adjustments, the levels and the contrast, is that we have even more control if we need it. We can open up the brightness and contrast adjustment and not only increase the contrast of the effect, but also the brightness of the fade effect. We might like it dark and moody or light and airy, anything you like. And in the levels adjustment, we can obviously adjust the amount of fade with the output sliders, but we can also change the gamma, which affects the brightness in another way. It affects the darkness to brightness ratio. So there we have it, a really simple and flexible fade effect using just two adjustments. I think that's very nice indeed. Okay, let's take a look at the macro. You'll find the link to it in the YouTube video description. First open the macro panel, which is usually here. If not, go to View and Studio and macro. Up pops the macro panel, hit the import icon and then navigate to your downloaded file. Mine's in PC downloads. Then just 
double click on it to import. There we have the macro in the panel with all of its steps. The next thing we need to do is just to transfer it to the macro library so that we can use it. Just click the add to library icon, type in the name of the macro. So I'll call this one matte effect and click OK. There we go, we now have the macro in our library, ready for use whenever we want it. To use the macro, first of all, make sure you have the layer you wish to fade selected, or the top layer of multiple if you wish to add the effect in multiple layers, and then with the layer selected, just click your macro. And there it is, an instant fade or matte effect. Really nice, I'll just hide this. I think that looks like a pretty good matte effect. And if we open up this group, which contains the matte effect, we have the levels adjustment, which I've renamed fade to make it more clear, and our brightness and contrast adjustment, which I've renamed tone. And they are both at 50% opacity. And this allows us to easily increase or decrease the effect. If I want much more of a fade effect, all I have to do is select the fade and up the opacity, like so. Or if I want very little fade, I can bring it right down, like so. Let's pop it right up for now. Now that looks very faded, but I think it now needs contrast. It looks a little washed out. So select Tone, the Brightness and Contrast layer, and we can now increase or decrease the contrast. Here I would like to increase it. And of course, we still have the ability to go into our adjustment and change the brightness and contrast there. And exactly the same with the fade, we still have all of those controls, like so. And if we select the group, we have complete control over the effect as a whole. Again, just by selecting the opacity, we can reduce or increase the effect of the fade. I think this is a pretty handy little macro without having to fiddle around with curves, which can be quite tricky. We now have a quite quick and effective way to apply a fade. And with just a couple of sliders, we have complete control over the fade attributes. And that is creating a matte effect with Affinity Photo.